Welcome to another video. I am the Star Man and I am here in the garden. Yes, I'm just in the garden here this morning and uh, a little bit hasty this video, I'm afraid, because I wasn't expecting to do this, but we've actually got a bit of a special event going on at the moment. I just want to turn, turn you around and I just want to show you this. I've got my telescope set up here, the Celestron um, Nexstar 6SE Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. It's trained on the moon at the moment. It's a crescent moon. I've also got my camera over here. This is one of my cameras, a D850 with a, a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And that's looking up towards the moon as well. And it's not just the moon that we're looking at. We're also looking at the planet Venus because the moon is about to hide the planet Venus. It's about to occult. It's what they call an occultation where one body moves in front of the other. And uh, that's gonna happen now. And the reason why this video is quite rushed as well, a lot of my videos, <laughs> quite a lot of my videos are a bit rushed actually is because I just wasn't expecting to see this at all I'd, I'd kind of given up hope on seeing it um, it's around about um, half past nine at the moment half past nine and it's a waning crescent moon that we've got so it's getting quite slim it's almost a new moon it's moving around towards the, the sun and then it'll be a new moon and then it'll start to wax again but we've also got the planet Venus, I'm just showing you a picture now, which is very, very close at this moment as I'm talking to you right now. Just look how close it is to the moon. And the moon is going to hide Venus for around about an hour. I've got a little bit of video as well to show you. Just check out this video. And this video was shot through my telescope here, through my telescope here. Amazing, um, powerful telescope, 1500 millimeter focal length. Just check out this video. We're now looking at Venus and it's getting ever so close to the moon and i tell you what i thought i wasn't going to be able to get set up in time i thought oh my god it, the weather forecast said the met office app that i got is absolutely hopeless all it showed was clouds all morning and rain no sign of sunshine whatsoever and yet what have we got look at this blue sky you know sometimes you're better off just looking out the window to tell the weather. You know, that's all you have to do sometimes. Just don't rely on any of these apps at all. But you can see I've got my woolly hat on because it's actually quite cold. It's really dropped here in northwest uh, UK where I am. The temperature's dropped. It's only around about, what, maybe eight degrees at the moment. Uh, so it's getting a bit chilly now. We're here in the so early November. But anyway... As I look at the screen, I'll just turn you around and show you the screen. So I've got, I've got this camera here. I don't know if you can see that. We can barely see it on the screen there. I don't know. Oh, sorry about that. Can you see it? It looks tiny on that. Can you see the moon there? Look, it looks really, really small through that lens there, which is a, a 70 to 200, and that's set at 200 mil. So I am recording on that one at the moment, and I'm taking pictures on that as well. But this one here... Obviously, I've got the Celestron Nexstar 6SE, which is a Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, and um, I've got the Celestron adapter on it for the for the camera, which actually fits my Nikon. So I had to get an adapter for the Panasonic S52 because that's the Panasonic S52, so that it would fit on there, and then I could get it on the telescope. And I've also got an electric focuser, which I focused on. And if we have a look at this, in fact, I, I, I did align it, but I was very, very, sorry about it. A very, very noisy helicopter going past at the moment. There you go. That's Monty, by the way. N Monty. It's based in the Isle of Man, that. So there you go. That's how it looks on the screen. And oh my goodness, folks. I don't know if you can see that, but if I turn that, uh, if I turn the display, oh, that, that line's in the way, how unfortunate. If I bring that down a bit, well, I'll show you this on the screen now. Oh, look, it's about to touch. Right, okay, the, the moon is just about to hide Venus. It's about to cut into Venus. We've got what you call first contact. It's about to touch Venus and it's going to, go behind the moon. Venus is going to go behind the moon for maybe up to about an hour or something like that. It kind of depends where you are. Uh, I'm just looking at the screen now. I've put the video. Oh my goodness. I think, I think, I think that we might just have it folks. I think, 
I think Venus has disappeared. Um, I'm going to put the video on the screen now. I actually missed it when it when it went behind, but I think I think that Venus has actually disappeared, folks. How about that? It's gone behind. It's disappeared behind the moon. How about that? Amazing. Okay, I just took my glasses off because I wanted to check through these binoculars. I've got some Bresser. Can you see that Bresser 12? Uh, sorry. These are 8 by 60, look, 8 by 60, so they've got uh, 8 times, 8 times power and 60 millimeter um, lenses on the end, which are really, really good for looking at space. I'm just going to have a look myself and see if I can get a close up through these. And yes, Venus has disappeared. It has definitely disappeared. Now, the thing is, is that a lot of people don't realise that you can actually see planets during the day. And in particular, Venus is quite easy to see during the day. You just have to look for it. But at the moment, even though we've got a very, very bright sky now, the sun's been up for about, um, the sun's been up now for a good two and a half hours or so. I don't know how long, but, but Venus is very, very visible during the day. And with it being so close to the moon, the crescent moon as well, obviously you do tend to see the waning moon in the morning, and that's what we're seeing at the moment. And it has now hidden the planet Venus. How about that? Amazing. So what I'll do now is I'm going to have a, go inside and have a cup of tea, and we'll wait for it to come out the other side. It's around about 20 to 10 now. 22. The times vary depending on where you are, but... Um, it's going to reappear maybe around about half past ten. So I'll have the, the, the I'll have the cameras video in until then, and we'll get it coming out the other side. Right. Okay. I've just had my cup of tea. I've been inside for about half an hour or so, and I've come back outside again, and I want to see if I can capture Venus coming out the other side. It was a little bit hurried um, catching it, the moon hiding Venus and it was a little bit I had to line up the telescope as well because it had gone off a little bit it's not tracking perfectly I've not set it up perfectly but we got it we got the moon hiding Venus and that was the main event we just about got it the only thing is now is at the moment the clouds seem to have come in a bit we've got some thin cloud up there and I want to try and catch it coming out the other side it's going to come out roughly on the right hand side and something else I want to talk about as well is that um, the reason why the moon got in the way of Venus is because the moon drifts as it goes through the sky, drifts, it drifts towards the east as it as it moves around, as it orbits the earth, you'll notice it drift, if you look at the moon one night and then you look at it the next night, you'll notice it's further towards the east at the same time, so that's what happens, that's why the moon moved against the background sky and moved towards Venus, so Venus moves as well, but not, it's not as obvious as the moon, because the moon is a lot, lot closer to Earth than Venus, now Venus does move around the sun, it goes around the sun, it's on the western side of the sun at the moment, which means we get to see it as a morning star, they call it a morning star, when it's on the other side of the sun, we get to see it after sunset it follows the sun after sunset so yeah we're just kind of hoping for this cloud to move or whether we can see it through the cloud i'll just line the telescope up again to see if we can get to see the moon even through that cloud there it's quite thin right okay so we've got it on the screen here now and venus is going to come out somewhere on the right hand side down this way about four five o'clock on the other side of the moon um i'll start recording now and then um <clears throat> so like I say, I'll start recording now and I'll try and keep that centred so that we get to see them We get to see Venus coming out the other end. The only thing that might spoil things is clouds But I think it's not looking too bad at the moment that cloud it has cleared out of the way, so it's not looking too bad Something else to notice as well is that you can even see the phase of Venus because that scope is so powerful. 1.5 metre focal length, the Celestron Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, that we can actually see the phase of Venus. And it's currently, it's a bit like a sort of half Venus because it's almost to a right angle to the sun. So it's like it's lit up on the left hand side. So I would describe it a bit like a waning gibbous. Uh, moon, you know, like when you see a waning gibbous moon, and it's lit up on the left-hand side, but more on the left-hand side, and and that's how I would describe Venus. And you can quite clearly see in the video that Venus is sort of not—it's not round, put it that way. And you can sometimes see Venus as a crescent as well. It all depends on where it is. 
around the sun. Absolutely amazing. Oh, it must be getting close now. It's 10.30 now and this is around about the time which I was kind of expecting that Venus would reappear again. Oh, it's getting so excited. And it's nice and clear as well. Look, look. Oh, I think we're going to get this, folks. Oh, the telescope is not tracking perfectly, so I do have to uh, keep lining it up. Can you see any sign of uh, Venus yet? It should be somewhere down that way there, around about five, five o'clock or something like that there, down there. No sign of it yet. Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, no. Is that Venus or is that a spot on the lens? I think it might be a spot on the lens. I'm just going to check with the binoculars because uh, I thought I could see something on the screen then. It's actually quite difficult to, to see. It, sometimes you lose the moon altogether, you know. I think it was a false alarm, but I'm not sure. You never know, because when Venus does reappear, it, it's, it's going to be quite dim. But uh, maybe that was a false alarm. Anyway, we'll keep waiting, shall we? It's definitely going to come out the other side. It's go I've just had to re realign the... the uh, it's, it's a little bit unfortunate. In my, rushed, in my rush to get ready, I very, very roughly aligned the telescope. So I do have to keep sort of lining up the moon every so often. So hopefully we will... We'll definitely get Venus coming out the other end. You know, the moon is actually, um, it's not, it's not that easy to see because it is a very, very slim crescent, waning crescent moon. But, uh, yeah, but hopefully when Venus comes out the other end, it will be quite obvious. But there's no sign of it just yet, but it can't be far away. It's now around about 25 to, it looks like, we, we did say that it was going to be around about an hour. It's hard to be precise. I, I checked on Stellarium and it did say that it was going to start to reappear about 10.30, which we've gone past now, so uh, still waiting. Oh, we've got some cloud coming over now. Oh my God, we've got something cloud coming over. Oh, where's that cloud come from? I don't want that to get in the way. Hopefully that cloud won't be too thick that we can't see it through the clouds. But we, we do have a little bit of cloud coming in there. Uh, just kind of hoping that it doesn't... Uh... I was kind of hoping that Venus would have shown up by now. Because we're now on... I don't even know what time it is. It must be <coughs> getting on for 20 to 10 now. And I still can't see it. Oh, that cloud is coming over, but uh, it's there. Venus has come out the other side. It's just come out the other side. Oh my God, I can see Venus, and it looks so, so bright. So there you go, that was the occultation of Venus and the Moon. Occultation, like I said before, it's not a word that you hear very often. It just means when, you know, when a, when a, when a solar system body, you know, obscures another one or touches it or something like that. But how about that, folks? Was not expecting to capture this at all. I got up this morning, it was driving rain, and that's what I expected. I expected it to be completely cloudy, but then the sun came out. And then I thought, you know what, let's have a little look and see if we can see the moon. And they did, I managed to see the crescent moon. It was quite, there was a lot of thin cloud around. And I'm really glad that I managed to get this, get to see it, because I was not expecting to see it at all. I'd given up on it. So I thought I'd do a video on it and bring it to you just in case you didn't get a chance to see it, because it's not the sort of thing that was very well publicised. But these sort of things do happen. Not very often, but they do happen. 
Uh, sometimes you get the moon moving in front of a bright star, you know, sometimes that can happen, but uh, not that often when it happens when it covers up a planet or some, a, a very visible planet like Venus. Uh, and during the day as well, you know, because you can see both during the day. Bright enough to see during the day. So there you go, that was it, folks. Um, I think the moon is still in a bit of cloud, but what I'll do is I'll bring you a little bit of video of it when the cloud moves out of the way and Venus moves a little bit further away from the sun. And I'll leave you with that at the end of the video. And I hope you like this video. And if you do, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to keep looking up.